Yeah, namaste and welcome, beloveds, to this holy light circle. Can you hear me better now? We have a lot of birds singing here. <laughs> okay. Yes. That's great. Okay, that's much better, man. What? That's much better. That's, that's much better. Yeah, very good. Yeah, but we are getting a lot of bird sound. <laughs> yes, we are. We have a rookery right next door since we're right on the water. And they've set up their all their nesting. All the shorebirds are in that tree, I think. It's really beautiful, actually. So they're singing and singing. Yeah, so this is, this is really an opportunity to go deep and just drop in, drop all the ideas about the world. That any idea of change, just to drop it, let it fall away. That anything's changing. And focus on the light within divine being before we're born, before you're born. Where there's no thought, before thought. Before we even knew what thought was, you can ask the light. Does the light, divine light that's here know what thought is? We look, we can see that the light that's here, that we all share, that we're celebrating. The light that we're celebrating doesn't speak. That's why Ramana Maharshi said that the highest teaching is no sound, silence, the highest communication. It's helpful for a time. We're so used to thought forms, communicating by thought. I think one of the really beautiful things about here as we go drop deeper and deeper into the silence together is to start tapping into super consciousness which Jesus talks about in the book. Unified consciousness. To really hear and move together as one without any voice communication whatsoever. We have the power to do this because we're one. And this is the practice of the deep, deep listening in the movement. What comes naturally, you see birds flying together, they just know. Just move. One takes the lead, one's drafting. And that's what we're really learning, to drop into that deep listening to the silence within. We can hear the voice that calls us home, the only voice of any value, our own, the one, yet beautifully appearing as seemingly many. It feels helpful in the light today to ask Jesus, will you reveal to me any objections to this divine light that's shared with my brother. Any moments of frustration, anger, tension. Pain in the body. I'm willing to see the thoughts below my level of awareness that generate these sensations.
and to see that the light cannot be changed by these sensations. The light that I share with my brothers. So at the center, we have two called stop moments where a bell rings and then we just sit and drop everything. It's just such a great reminder that nothing's more important than divine being and presence and that nothing in this world, no movement, no doing of anything is more important than that celebration of being. and hearing the soundless sound of the being, of being, of what is. I remember a course lesson this week where Jesus said, he talked about sound, how we make sound, and then we don't like it, we want to reject it. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> What's arising? It's too noisy. Like we're generating sounds. The deep down in the subconscious mind, Jesus, is there any desire deep within my, below my level of awareness to hear a sound and want to reject it? Have an experience of rejecting it. In sensory experience. I'm willing to see it. It's like some sounds you want to hear more of. Jesus, are there sounds I want to hear more of and some less of? So helpful to see how we use sensory experience for the experience of more and less hearing. I want to see, I want to hear more of that. That sounds not right. There's something wrong with that. That's too noisy. The editing function, the grand editor. And that's really the humor of it, right? Because infinite love expresses as a world wants to have in within consciousness experience of other and then go no i don't like that <laughs> no not that sound no not that bird singing right outside my window like wanting to push it away i can see it like i want to get rid of that one just kind of edit Think of the impossibility too, of that whole scenario, actually, when you just think for a moment, okay, first of all, does the divine light that we are, that we're celebrating here in our direct experience, because we can see it, just drop every idea of who we think we are and just drop everything, empty handed, no idea about anything. Just ask, Jesus, does the light know anything about differentiating between sounds? Can that be found in light? that we share, the light that's here. So within the play of consciousness, the power of conscious, it is a power within consciousness to deny itself, experiencing itself as whole. And it'll hone in, just know that we can observe this. This is a fascinating observation. We're starting to just observe it without judging anything. Just notice how it hones in the honing mechanism, the honing in on that little thing. Like if you look around the world, the room and outside, there are billions of things, billions of plants and colors and sounds. And then somehow within consciousness, like this amazing display of sounds, and it will like hone in, da -da 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 -da, and it'll go right for one. Now that's a problem out of like all the diversity. That's the functioning of limited 
experience limitation. It's going to move out. It's going to look for a problem. Its whole function is to look for where the problem is. So in sensory experience of hearing, where am I creating, miscreating, having a desire, experience myself listening through what I hear seemingly comes through the ears. Like there's an idea that comes through the ears. Like, okay. Where in the experience of the last day was there something I did not want to hear? Some sound I wanted to control. I'm willing to see that. <coughs> Someone saying something, I really want to stop it. Stop. <laughs> Don't say it. I wanted to have control over that sound. Push it away. Bring it closer. Want more of that. I wish that sound lasted longer. Jesus of any desire where a sound was saying wanting more of it. In this play of consciousness, there can never be enough. Just that's just sound. So even sound has to be forgiven and seen as irrelevant to divine being. That's just one sense, sensory experience. We can find, follow it in touch, sensations in the body. Jesus, how over the that I used some kind of sensation to experience limitation in the body. Some sensory experience that I didn't like, a texture. A lump in the bed. Some pain in the body, something sensorily to object to or want more of. I've had a lot of talks about with Jesus about the hot springs here, because I love sitting in a big hot tub. He says when it's given in purpose, that's helpful. It can be given in purpose, just because it's not like Jesus is coming and saying, look, we're gonna cut out every sensory experience you've ever had. But I could tell that it was, oh, I just feel so much love saying this. I'm so grateful to have these talks with him and go, look, Jesus, really, I do not, this is, I can see there's an affinity, loving the sensation of this really hot, I mean, ramp it up, 104 degrees. We probably use Celsius, probably 49, 39, 39 maybe. Make it hot. But, you know, I, I don't value that more than I value infinite being. It's helpful to look at sensation. Jesus, is there anywhere I'm using sensation to push away? Or I have a hunger for more of something. This is why Jesus points to sexuality so directly. Because that's that touch hunger sensory experience hunger. I'm willing to see any denials of myself through sensory experience, through sensation. We can go to each sensation, like eating, food coming to the mouth, taste some taste to push away, some taste to want more of. 
the wanting. Jesus, is there a desire below my level of awareness to have taste? To single certain things out. It's not having enough. Having too much. The wanting more or less. Through taste, sensory experience. None of it's bad, it's all so innocent at all, because we're innocent and loved by God. We're just looking at where through sensory experience we deny ourselves feeling everything, experiencing to, it, within totality, without limit, without that focal functioning in consciousness to bring it down to this problem like this. <laughs> that problem's happening. It's very helpful to watch how it moves in the senses and really go deep below those sensations and follow what's the source of that sensation all the way back. And you start to see that you're actually owned, quote unquote, by a sensation, like it owns you the way you feel. I feel bad because this sensation. I feel bad because I don't have that sensation, that taste in my mouth right now. So there can never be a celebration in this. That wanting. that differentiation through the senses for more or less to control what's happening when all the expression of divinity goes this way. I said this before where I have, there was just such a feeling that it all came this way, like it was the world acting this way on someone and then as we open up, we feel, it. and I didn't realize that this, the coming in this way was actually the closing up and the denial, the self-denial of infinite love. And then as forgiveness, just those ideas fall away, you feel it, you can see the world just, that's just figuratively, but it goes this way, rolls out into a world out of nothing, out of infinite love. Pouring out without limit. As long as we're fooled by the senses that to touch this, that's what anger does. So anger, so deep in the subconscious mind, makes this feel like an object, hard, a hard object. And it seems like this object is separate from me because the desire is to experience this object separate from me as long as that's a desired experience, to be an object and have be acted on by some object in the world. But as this forgiveness occurs, sensory experience becomes unified. It's hard to explain that, it's, but it's direct, in it's direct experience, you see it. There's not otherness. In it. And that's the only way it can have peace because otherwise sensory experience is interpreted that something's happening to me and we always feel acted on by the world. Yet the world arises within us, within the one. There are no words for it. It's just the recognition that we come here to celebrate light of the divine being. Whole, complete, infinite, untouched by time or death. And then the desire for sensory experience to attempt to prove other to prove that these objects, this is separate, and that 
over there is separate. This, you know, each thing, each item is separate. Yet, as we sit here in the light of truth, we can go within and ask the light, is that true? Because we're powerful, we're infinite beings. We're being, there is only one being, we call it infinite beings. In the light of divinity, can it, that's here, in our direct experience, talking to Jesus, are there any objects? Can any objects be found? In our direct experience by looking. This is the value of the deep contemplation. The contemplation on the light within. And how powerful that alone is. I love it. Muji says, just contemplation on the light within. Well, my niece said it perfectly. It melts trouble. <laughs> she... <laughs> what happens in the light? It melts trouble. And Muji says so beautifully, just by marinating as that light, it burns forests of delusion. Silent contemplation and divine being is a very valuable time, very valuable use of time. Is the by just this devotion to this deep sense of being, and there needn't be a concern that you don't know what it is you do. We all do. And we're devoted ourselves to hear that voice within Jesus tell us of the love that we are. The what am I? What am I? That's a very worthwhile question just to marinate on. As you'll see, the experience here at least is that love answers that. At first, the mind goes off on a what, 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 you know, and tries to fill in the blank, but it's not a fill in the blank. <laughs> it's a it, divine being answers. The only one that can answer that question is our true identity. What am I? And then just bask in the gratitude and the love just by honoring the stillness and the silence of being. Jesus, is there anything else for us to see today, for me to see, because it's all for me? There's no words to describe it because there isn't no, it's, there's no words in English language to communicate infinite love. We can only be it. It's beyond the ability to talk about actually light. How would you talk about divine light?
we just shine. That seems to be Jesus' message just for today, for here, just shine. So simple. I can hear him saying, and honor those I send to you. The holy ones I send to you. Honor those. For as you have faith in the power they carry, so you have faith in the power within yourself. So as you know them to be perfect, so you will know yourself to be perfect, whole and complete. Primordial innocence, use that word, primordial innocence. Before even the thought that innocent could be innocent. Before that thought. Thank you, beloveds, for coming and shining your light here with us. It's truly holy purpose to be with you. And I don't think this computer's hooked up, so I think I can just walk out and show outside, right? See them today? So you can have a look at. The monastery, the mystical mountain in the back. And the church bell of San Juan Posola in the background starting to ring. You're in our hearts always. Thank you, beloveds. Oh. Did you want to say something, Annie, or are you just waving by? You just go, <laughs> we love you. We hear you, even when you're not speaking. We, <laughs> we hear all of you, like, oh my gosh. Love you. You're your sisters here. That's a little circle of heaven right there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>